Hello everyone, welcome again to Itopedia World. This is Miss Jazz and we're going to talk today about vegetative propagation. And actually this topic have three parts and today we're going to tackle the first part. First, let's define vegetative propagation. When we say vegetative propagation, that is a process of increasing the number of plants of a particular species or cultivar. It also form of a sexual reproduction of a plant. Only one plant is involved and the offspring is the result of another parent. And the new plant is genetically identical to the parent. So actually, vegetative propagation have two kinds. The first one, we have the natural vegetative propagation. And the second one, we have the artificial vegetative propagation. But this moment, we're going to tackle first about the natural one. The example of natural, we have actually four. And the first one, we have the stem, runners, or stolon. When you say runners or stem or stolon, that is from stem that grow horizontally above the ground, they have nodes where buds are formed, and these buds grow into a new plant. Stolons or runners are horizontal stems that grow above the ground. For example, strawberries, tiny plantlets form along the stolon and roots form where they touch the ground. When the connection with the parent plant breaks, the new plant becomes independent. As you can see in the picture, this is the stem and it's run to another one and it produces the same as the mother plant. Another example we have for the strawberry and the colocasia. This one, the stem. And it produces the new plant. The second example for natural, we have the roots or what you call rhizomes. New plant will grow out of swollen and modified roots called tubers. And buds develop at the base of the stem and then grow into new plants. Rhizomes are root-like stems that grow horizontally under the ground. New roots and shoots form at the nodes with shot growing upward to form new plantlets. And lateral buds grow out to form new rhizomes as sample includes iris and root ginger. As you can see in the picture again, this is what you call the rhizomes. On the root, it gives several stems roots that can be produced the same as the mother plant. The third example, we have the tubers or leaves. Leaves of some plants will grow into a new plant if they become the touch from the parent. Other plants grow small plants called plantlets on the edge of their leaves. Tubers are swollen portions of an underground stem that store food so a plant can lie dormant over the winter, for example, potatoes. Axillary pods, commonly known as eyes, form over the surface of the tubers and produce shots that grow into a new plant the following year. As you can see, this is the tubes or the leaves one for the potato. Next, we have the bulbs. A bulb contain an underground stem. Leaves are attached to the stem, and these leaves contain much stored food. At the center of the bulb is the apical bud. Also attached are lateral buds. The apical bud will produce leaves and a flower, while the lateral buds will produce new shoots. As the plant grows and develops, it will form a new bulb underground. Bulbs such as the fodils form lateral buds from the base of the mother bulb which produce new smaller bulbs or bulb bells in the subsequent years. As you can see in the picture, these are the examples of bulbs vegetative propagation. So, 
after discussing natural vegetative propagation, we all know the four example or process for this kind of propagation. We have the bulbs, tubers, runners, and rhizomes. So I want you to watch the part two of this video and let's talk about artificial vegetative propagation. Thank you for listening at Wikipedia.